And then you went to the the next one, which is Celtech. I'll take this one okay. right now. So, yeah, so our big, uh, so this is a safety critical tool. I said this has a very accurate uh, transducer. This has what I would say is a very, very, very accurate transducer, okay? Um, there's, there's reasons for that. Um, operates the same way though. You can run this in standalone mode. Um, I would say the majority of our customers uh, are gonna run run this in uh, with the controller, okay? Because this is safety yeah. critical. These are the types of applications that you should halt, halt and, production to fix. And it's a, right. it's a level of insurance and uh, safety. Yeah. Probably integrate it with some type of MES system or Correct. data collection system. Let's, let's actively. For those that, that are not as familiar with it, let's talk about why precision torque is important. I think it's, it's again, some people are rolling their eyes. <laughs> simple. <Yeah. laughs> but to some, it may not be that simple. They don't yeah. just don't understand. You know, you just tighten it up till you as far as you can go, and then you're good to go. So who wants yeah. to start on that one? So, I mean, the, what I can plug in there is uh, something I learned fairly quickly when I came into this industry. Um, the, the misnomer is more torque, or the tighter, the better. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely not the case. Uh, over torquing in some cases, depending on the application, can be more hazardous or just uh, just as hazardous or more hazardous than, than not enough torque. Let's talk about a real life scenario. Uh, I mean, prime example, seat belts in the automotive industry. Um, it, I mean, we, we need to know that we have that seat belt bolt that's anchoring you to that seat in the event of an, an accident um, is torqued properly. If we over yield that bolt and put too much stress on that fastener, uh, if we're over torquing, that is, um, that final, that impact and that stress from that impact could shear that bolt head off and that seat belt fails and does not do you any good at that point. Right. Um, yeah. And I, I never mean, thought about that, but that's. I never thought about that application ever. Yeah, but yeah. If yeah, you over torque that bolt, yeah, so you've already I mean, got you, tension you, on it. You may see it with uh, under torquing as well. I mean, like I said, it, it could be the same or worse depending on the application. But that's it's just a one great example, example of a, of a, where over torque could be worse than under torque. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Perfect. I think uh, you know too the the way we always the way I explain it to to people. Uh, maybe new to the industry as well is like, you know, for a, a functional bolt, for example, if you miss one, no one's the end user, the person driving the vehicle will we'll use the will stay on the MVI, you yeah. know, for now. The person driving the vehicle is likely never going to know if you missed a bolt. Yeah. Think of a skid pan. You know, I, I changed oil and you know all through college, and you know you'd have forty bolts on a skid pan, which never made sense to me. But you miss one, right? No one's ever going to know that. A quality critical application is something that someone's likely going to notice, but uh, it's not going to affect the primary functions of the vehicle. So think like if you missed a screw on a speaker in a, in a door, and yeah. you know that eventually came loose, started rattling, or the speaker started rattling. They're going to take that in for a repair or warranty or whatever. That would be quality critical. You gave a great example of, uh, of a safety critical, critical, which basically means if this thing failed for one reason or another, it could hurt someone or worse. And that's how we kind of internalize the different classifications yeah. for these tools. Perfect. 